Now Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 3 loved God so much, which is equal to living a godly life, because godliness means love for God. In practical terms, Solomon had so much wisdom, but look at in 1, 1 Kings chapter 11. Now, verse, verse 1 and verse 4, 1 Kings 11, but King Solomon loved he has diverted his love from God to many what? Strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Isidonites, and he tied everything, tying him. Tie, 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 tie. Look at verse 4. <laughs> Glory to God. Look at verse 4. For it came to pass that when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the lord his god as was his heart the david in the heart of david his father look at verse 9 verse 9 and the lord was angry with solo because his heart was torn from the god of israel <laughs> why are you laughing which he appeared to him. i call him solo <laughs> glory to god amen Look at verse 14. Verse 14. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. He was living in peace before. When he lost touch with God, he began to live in crisis. But if you read that chapter very clearly, maybe from verse 9, from verse 4 down now, you will see that at a time, Solomon got married to 700 wives and 300 concubines. Madness of the highest order. A only one man had 1,000 women to his custody. What? Which means everything that was kept, Solomon ran after them. Is it not happening to some people today? That is the spirit of immorality. He got caught up with it because he won't control. Look at it there. And he had 700 wives. If you count these people sitting down here now, we count 700 people, they are almost everybody sitting down the other way. Which means when Solomon's wives come to worship, the church hall is full. <laughs> Not to talk about that congregational members. 700 wives uh, wife, and 300 Concubines. Ah! Tell me which day will Solomon have to fast and pray? Because when you finish with wife A, you are in wife B, wife C, wife D, before you rotate 1,000. How many days will you have in a year? <laughs> Madness. Because he lost touch with God. He lost divine wisdom. In the name that is above every other name, the wisdom God has given you, it will not turn to foolishness. Can I hear your amen? Somebody here. So it means when that spirit comes upon people, they do foolish things. They do things they never imagined they could do in their life. That's what that spirit does to people. That's one of the consequences of living an ungodly life. For as long as Solomon was tilted towards God, his wisdom was increasing. When he began to move away from God, he began to live in foolishness. Which means the closer you are to God, the more access you have to divine wisdom. The farther away you are from God, the farther away you move away from divine wisdom. And we know that with wisdom, kings rule and reign. Number two, consequences of ungodliness is that you deny yourself of answer to prayers. Isaiah 59 from verse 1. We read from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 59 from verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is he heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities are separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. So, some people are praying, but God is not hearing. Because if I regard iniquity in my heart. No matter how much I cry, the Lord will not hear me. Please, don't rob yourself of connectivity with God. 
Now, how do I overcome ungodliness? I just give us maybe two keys before we shut down. Now, how do I overcome ungodliness? I'll pick this point. Number one, keep a right company. First Corinthians 15, verse 33. Beware! Who is your friend? He said, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts what? Good manner. Beware of your friends. Anybody that will not follow you to heaven, don't follow you to hell. Beware. Friendship is not by force, it's by choice. I rather go alone than to go with a bad friend. Since I got born again, I've been like this. Eventually, God gave me a wife, so the only friend I have is my wife. If you can't find me in the office, you will see me in my house. There was a day my wife was looking for me, not knowing that I was in the children's room sleeping. He thought I'd gone out. He looked for me everywhere, called everybody she knew, but she didn't call the room where I was sleeping. Only to discover that the husband is in the house. Somebody told, I knew daddy doesn't go to anywhere. He must be in that house. Church, instead of following a bad friend, go alone. It is better not to walk with a bad friend than to have one that will send you to hell. Now, there is this man, 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1. We read it to verse 3. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tema, and Ammon, the son of David, loved her brother, loved sister. And Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick of love for the sister Tema, for she was a virgin. And Ammon thought, how can I get into my sister? Verse 3. Look at it. But Ammon had a friend whose name was what? Jonadab, the son of Shemir, David's brother. And Jonadab was what? A very subtle man. Beware. Beware. Beware of those people that corner you to do things that you don't want to do. Beware. He had a friend. What he didn't plan to do, his friend lured him into it. And that brought a lot of calamity to the family. Beware. Many were introduced to smoking because of their friends. Many have been introduced to all kinds of vices, homosexuality, lesbianism, because of the kind of friend they were going out with. And now you are struggling to be out of it. If your friend took you there, unfriend that friend so you can be free. There are many people you have on your Facebook. Friends that are creating, pulling you away from God instead of making you run closer to God. Beware. What is my admonition? Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with the wise man Himself shall also be what? Keep company with the wise. Run away from people that draw you out from God. And you find them everywhere. You find them everywhere. Best of the same feather will always flock together. Everywhere you find them. Somebody came to church looking for a godly sister to marry. But he was not a godly brother. The sister too is looking for a godly brother to marry. But she was not a, a godly sister. So God in his finished mercy merged the ungodly brother with the ungodly sister and two of them met in church. Because whatever a man sows, that he shall reap. Eventually when Katakata started in their marriage, I, I, I thought you are a godly sister. Ah, me too. I thought you are a godly brother. They jammed together in church. Though so that you are in church does not mean you are in Christ. Just be sure of your salvation. Number two, how to overcome ungodliness? Engage the power of the blood of Jesus for your victory. 
Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Engage the blood for your, for your freedom and for your sanctification and for your liberty. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11, also tells us to verse 12. As for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Turn you to your stronghold, ye prisoners of old. Even today do I declare that I shall render double unto thee. So, by the engagement of the blood against those vices and forces that are trying to pull you to hell, you, you gain your freedom. So you so certain things comes into your heart, you cry out the blood of Jesus against you. It may look as if you are stupid doing it, but you are fighting your battle. Don't mind who is mocking you. You are fighting your battle. Maybe something 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 solidly move you to slap your wife. Say the blood of Jesus. Your wife may say, Honey, what is wrong? Nothing. I'm good. <laughs> because if you do not plead that blood, the hand will move to her beautiful face and give her five finger stamp. I tell people, the face of my wife is not for slapping, it's for pampering. Beware! So that when that spirit moves you, you say, the blood of Jesus for your freedom. And you'll be free. Because the blood that can set you free from sin can deliver you from anything. Is somebody hearing me? Now, what are the benefits of godliness as we, as we round up? Benefit of godliness. I discover that one of the benefits of godliness is supernatural prosperity. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the castle of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, nor started in the way of or, 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 or the way of sinners, not sitting in the seat of the scoffer, verse 2 say, but his delight is in the law of the law. In his law does he meditate day and night. Verse 3 say, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth his fruit in this season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth. Uh -uh. Godliness is the foundation for supernatural prosperity. I like you to understand it. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 102 or 112. Psalm 112. The Bible says, Blessed is that man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. So if for nothing, even if you are not considering yourself or doing what you are doing, consider your children. Consider your children. I'm at peace today. I'm at rest. I'm not so much an old person, but I'm at rest with the children God has given me because they've seen me serve God. One day my children asked me, say, Daddy, how come things come your way the way they come? I said, number one, I learned how to pay tight and I learned how to follow God. Supernatural prosperity. You don't need to beg to get I discovered that as a child of God, you don't need to buy to own. You can receive it. That is supernatural prosperity. God is bringing someone to that level here. Some people boast of their salary, yeah? but I boast of supernatural supply. I tell you, I boast of supernatural supply. God is not fake. He's real. He's real. I say he's real. In the name of Jesus, we have two days to Christmas. Somebody here, there shall be many surprise packages in your life. I'm not hearing that amen very well now. Let that amen be the loudest somewhere here. <laughs> Lastly, it guarantees eternity with Christ. Godliness guarantees eternity with Christ. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. The Bible recorded there, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. If you read it, you will see, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor you know, abusers of themselves with mankind, 
nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11. He said, and such as we are some of you, but now you are washed. You are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So there are people who would never qualify to see the kingdom of God. Please don't be part of them. Don't be part of them. And the Bible tells us in Revelation 21 verse 5. Revelation 20, 21 verse 5. He said, and, and he that sat upon the throne, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write. And these are the words that were true. They were faithful. Verse 6 tells us there. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto them that task, the fountain of water of life, freely. Verse 7 tells us, he said, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 8. He said, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, warmongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, and all that have their part in the, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and bright home, which is the second death. No one of us shall be there. Therefore, I want to give this opportunity right now to somebody who wants to say, Jesus, this thing is becoming too late. I need you in my life. I want to be saved. Wherever you are this morning, you want to give your life to Christ. You want your sins forgiven. You want to become a child of God. I'd like you to run and escape from that hair that is about consuming you. Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Christ. Stand on your feet wherever you are. Stand on your feet. You are here also. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Also stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. You know you are falling backward. You are sliding back. No one to help you. No more prayer life. No more study. No more anything. Your fire has gone down. But you want to rededicate your life. Stand on your feet also. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I want to also pray for some people who are struggling with certain habits. You don't know how to come out of it. You go in, you come out. You go in, you come out. Also stand on your feet. You want to give your life to Christ. Stand on your feet. Now everyone standing up. Carry your Bible. Carry your bag. Start coming forward. Start coming to the altar side. Church, clap for them. Start coming. Carry your Bible. Carry your bag. God bless you. Start coming. I can see you. God is blessing you. Be sincere. Your sincerity will reposition you for the plan of God. Just keep clapping for them. They are coming. They are coming. You want to make it right with Christ. You want to become a child of God. You don't want this thing to continue after now. You need a change of story. Church, are you still clapping? Fire sin. 